Hello, good evening, my dear friends. I am ready to start sharing some more from John for you. <clears throat> and I'm reading from the New King James Version uh, tonight. I tried uh, reading to myself out loud from the Old King James Version, and that's been my Bible go-to for years, but I don't know what's the matter with my tongue. It it, it has a hard time talking the uh, British English right now, so I'm going to be using the uh, New King James again tonight. I hope that's all right with you. I, I think my tongue is getting old and fat. And it doesn't move like it used to. I, nothing about me moves like it used to. But anyway, let me get started. We've gone through the first five books, and we're going to start in chapter six. And chapter six is a long chapter. It's got 70-something verses. So I don't know if we'll do two or three chapters tonight, but whenever... Uh, I feel like I can't do another chapter, I'll stop. I got me some water here, and I'm ready to roll. I had a wonderful day today. Man, I'll, maybe I'll do a separate video just to tell you about my day. I have been thanking God all day long for today. It was one of the best days I've had in a long time, and I just really thank Him. I got a lot done. I, God gave me a lot of strength and a lot of energy, and I've just been going literally all day so uh, here we go with John chapter 6 after these things Jesus went over the Sea of Galilee which is the Sea of Tiberias then a great multitude followed him because they saw his signs which he performed on those who were diseased and Jesus went up on the mountain and there he sat with his disciples now the Passover, a feast of the Jews, was near. Then Jesus lifted up his eyes, and seeing a great multitude coming toward him, he said to Philip, Where shall we buy bread that these may eat? But this he said to test him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, Two hundred denarii, worth of bread is not sufficient for the, for them that every one of them may have a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a lad here who has five barley loaves and two small fishes, but what are they among so many? Then Jesus said, Make the people sit down. Now there was much grass in the place, so the men sat down in number about 5,000. And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to the disciples and the disciples to those sitting down, and likewise of the fish as much as they wanted. So then when they were filled, he said to his disciples, Gather up the fragments that remain so that nothing is lost. Therefore they gathered them up and filled twelve baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves which were left over by those who had eaten. And then those men, when they had seen the sign that Jesus did, said, This is truly the prophet who has come into the world. Therefore, when Jesus perceived that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, he departed again to the mountain by himself alone. Now when evening came, his disciples went down to the sea. He got into the boat and went over the sea toward Capernaum. And it was already dark, and Jesus had not come to them. Then the sea arose because a great wind was blowing. So when they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and drawing near the boat, and they were afraid. But he said to them, It is I, do not be afraid. 
Then they willingly received him into the boat, and immediately the boat was at the land where they were going. On the following day, when the people who were standing on the other side of the sea saw that there was no other boat there except the one which his disciples had entered, and that Jesus did not enter the boat with his disciples, because he walked out on the water and met them there. Remember, he, he didn't get on it and left when they did. Uh, they also got into boats and went to Capernaum seeking Jesus. And when they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? <laughs> Jesus answered them and said, Most assuredly, I say to you, you seek me, not because you saw the signs, but because you ate of the loaves and were filled. Do not labor for the food which perishes, but for the food which endures to everlasting life, which is the Son of Man will give to you, because God the Father has set his seal on him. Then they said to him, What shall we do that we may work the works of God? Jesus Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God, that ye believe in him whom he sent. That's the work, friend. Believe in him who God sent. And him was Jesus. Excuse me while I scratch my nose. Therefore, they said to him, What sign will you perform that we may see it and believe you? What work will you do? Our fathers ate the manna in the desert, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Most assuredly, I say unto you, Moses did not give you bread from heaven, but my Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. And they're about to really get confused now. Then they said to Jesus, Lord, give us this bread always. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger and he who believes in me shall never thirst. But I said to you that you have seen me and you do not believe. All that the Father gives me will come to me, and the one who comes to me I will by no means cast out. For I have come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. This is the will of the Father who sent me, that of all he has given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up at the last day. And this is the will of him who sent me, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Then the Jews complained about him because he said, I am the bread which came down from heaven. And they said, Is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How is it then that he says, I have come down from heaven? Of course, they did not comprehend. Jesus therefore answered and said to them, I guess they had not read the first book of John, where said, uh, Jesus said, I am, uh, oh, my mind just went blank. Well, I got it right here. Let me run to it real quick. I read it to you all all the time, or I quote it a lot. In the beginning was the Word, speaking of Jesus, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. They must not have read the first chapter of John. All right, now let me see if I can find my place again. They said, 
How is it then that he says that he come down from heaven? Jesus answered and said to them, Do not murmur among yourselves. No one can come to me unless the Father draws him. And I will raise him up at the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall, be, shall all be taught by God. Therefore, everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except he who is from God. He has seen the Father. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me has everlasting life. That's the plan of salvation right there. He who believes in Jesus has everlasting life. I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which comes down from heaven that, speaking of himself, Jesus, that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I shall give is my flesh, talking about Calvary, which I give for the life of the world. The Jews therefore quarreled among themselves, as Jews are so good at doing, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? <clears throat> then Jesus said to them, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless you eat of the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is food indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me and I in him as the living father sent me and I live because of the father so he who feeds on me will live because of me and he's talking about eternal life uh, y'all I'm sure knew that this is the bread which came down from heaven not as your fathers ate the manna and are dead he who eats this bread will live forever. These things he said in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. Therefore, many of his disciples, when they heard this, said, This is a hard saying. Who can understand it? They, they no comprende. When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples complained about this, he said to them, does this offend you? What then if you should see the Son of Man ascend where he was before? It is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you are spirit, and they are life. But there are some of you who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were who did not believe, and who would betray him. And he said, Therefore I have said to you that no one can come to me unless it has been granted to him by my Father. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked with him no more. Then Jesus said to the twelve, Do you also want to go away? But Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Also, we have come to believe and know that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered them, Did I not choose you, the twelve, and one of you is a devil? He spoke of Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon, for it was he who would betray Jesus, being one of the twelve. After these things, chapter 7, after these things, 
Jesus walked in Galilee, for he did not want to walk in Judea because the Jews sought to kill him. Now the Jews' feast of tabernacles was at hand. His brothers therefore said to him, Depart from here and go into Judea, that your disciples also may see the works that you are doing, for no one does anything in secret while he himself seeks to be known openly. If you do these things, show yourself to the world, for even his brothers did not believe in him. Then Jesus said to them, My time has not yet come, but your time is already is always ready. The world cannot hate you, but it hates me, because I testify of it that its works are evil. You go up to this feast, I am not yet going up to this feast, for my time has not yet been fulfilled. <clears throat> when he had said these things to them, he remained in Galilee. But when his brothers had gone up, then he also went up to the feast, not openly, but as it were, in secret. Then the Jews sought him at the feast and said, Where is he? And there was much complaining among the people concerning him. Some said, He is good. Others said, No, on the contrary, he deceives the people. However, no one spoke openly of him for fear of the Jews. Now about the middle of the feast, Jesus went up into the temple and taught. And the Jews marveled, saying, How does this man know letters, having never studied? Jesus answered them and said, My doctrine is not mine, but his who sent me. If anyone wills to do his will, he shall know concerning the doctrine, whether it is from God or whether I speak on my own authority. He who speaks from himself seeks his own glory, but he who seeks the glory of the one who sent him is true, and no unrighteousness is in him. Did not Moses give you the law, yet none of you keeps the law? Why do you seek to kill me? He got him good there, didn't he? <laughs> The people, and answer, the people answered and said, You have a demon who is seeking to kill you. Jesus answered and said to them, I did one work, and you all marvel. Moses, therefore, gave you circumcision, not that it is from Moses, but from the fathers, and you circumcise a man on the Sabbath. If a man receives circumcision on the Sabbath, so that the law of Moses should not be broken. Are you angry with me because I made a man completely well on the Sabbath? Do not judge according to appearance, but judge with righteous judgment. Now some of them from Jerusalem said, Is this not he whom they seek to kill? But look, he speaks boldly, and they say nothing to him. Do the rulers know indeed that this is truly the Christ? However, we know where this man is from, but when the Christ comes, no one knows where he is from. Then Jesus cried out as he taught in the temple, saying, You both know me, and you know where I am from, and I have not come of myself, but he who sent me is true, whom you do not know, but I know him, for I am from him, and he sent me. Therefore they sought to take him, but no one laid a hand on him, because his hour had not yet come. And many of his people believed in him, and said, When the Christ comes, will he do more signs than these which this man has done? The Pharisees heard the crowd murmuring these things concerning him, and the Pharisees and the chief priests sent officers to take him. Then Jesus said to them, I shall be with you a little while longer, and then I will go to him who sent me. 
You will seek me and not find me, and where I am, you cannot come. Then the Jews said among themselves, Where does he intend to go that we shall not find him? Does he intend to go to the dispersion among the Greeks and teach the Greeks? Is this what he is this the thing that he said, You will seek me and not find me, and where I am you cannot come? On the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out, saying, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. But this he spoke concerning the Spirit, whom those believing in him would receive, for the Holy Spirit was not yet given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. Therefore, many from the crowd, when they heard this saying, said, Truly, this is the prophet. Others said, This is the Christ. But some said, Will the Christ come out of Galilee? Has, has not Scripture said that the Christ comes from the seed of David and from the town of Bethlehem? Where David was so there was a division among the people because of him now some of them wanted to take him but no one laid hands on him then the officers came to the chief priests and Pharisees who said to them why have you not brought him the officers said no man ever spoke like this man then the Pharisees answered them are you also to see have any of the rulers or the Pharisees believed in him? But this crowd does not know the law is accursed. Nicodemus, he who came to Jesus by night, being one of them, said to them, Does our law judge a man before it hears him and knows what he is doing? So they answered and said to him, Are you also from Galilee? Search and look, for no prophet has arisen out of Galilee. And I think I can do one more chapter. I was checking the time on the camera because that camera memory is almost full. And everyone, this is chapter 8. And everyone went to his own house, but Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. Now early in the morning he came again into the temple, and all the people came to him. And he sat down and taught them. Then the scribes and Pharisees brought to him a woman caught in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in, the, in adultery in the very act. Now Moses and the law commanded us that, that such should be stoned. But what do you say? This they said, testing him, that they might have something of which to accuse him. Jesus stooped down and wrote on the ground with his finger as though he did not hear him. But when they continued asking him, he raised himself up and said to them, He who is without sin among you, let him cast the first stone at her. Bam! And again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. Then those who heard it, being convicted by their conscience, went out one by one, beginning with the oldest, even to the last. And Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. When Jesus had raised himself up and saw no one but the woman, he said to her, Woman, where are those accusers of yours? Has no one condemned you? She said, No one, Lord. And Jesus said to her, Neither do I condemn you? Go and sin no more. Then Jesus spoke to them again, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. The Pharisees therefore said to him, You bear witness of yourself. Your witness is not true. Jesus 
answered and said to them, Even if I bear witness of myself, my witness is true, for I know where I came from and I know where I'm going, but you do not know where I come from and where I'm going. You judge according to the flesh, I judge no one. And yet, if I do judge, my judgment is true, for I am not alone, but I am with the Father who sent me. It is also written in your law that the testimony of two men is true. I am one who bears witness of myself, and the Father who sent me bears witness of me. So, bam! Jesus told them right there, didn't he? Then they said to him, Where is your father? Jesus answered, You know neither me nor my father. If you had known me, you would know my father also. These words Jesus spoke in the treasury as he taught in the temple, and no one laid hands on him, for his hour had not yet come. Then Jesus said to them again, I am going away, and if you will seek me and will die in your sin, where I go, you cannot come. But the Jews said, He will kill himself, because he says, Where I go, you cannot come. And he said to them, You are from beneath, I am from above. You are of this world, I am not of this world. Therefore I said to you, that you will die in your sins, for if you do not believe that I am he, you will die in your sins. And that's what I'm trying to tell you all too, friends. I think all my viewers presently are Christian. But if there's any of you out there that's listening, it's not, that's you. Uh, then they said to him, Who are you? And Jesus said to them, Just what I have been saying to you from the beginning. I have many things to say and to judge concerning you, and he who sent me is true, and I speak the world those things, I speak to the world those things, which I heard from him. They did not understand that he spoke to them of the Father. Then Jesus said to them, When you lift up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am he, and that I do nothing of myself, but as my Father taught me, I speak these things, and he who sent me is with me. The Father has not left me alone, for I always do those things that please him. And that is one of my prayers, that I always do those things that pleases my Lord. As he spoke these words, many believed in him. Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, If ye abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. And if you shall know the truth, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. They answered him, We are Abraham's descendants, and have never been in bondage to anyone. How can you say you will be made free? Jesus answered them, saying, Most assuredly, I say to you, Whoever commits sin is a slave of sin. And a slave does not abide in the house forever, but a son abides forever. Therefore, if the son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. Y'all get that? Jesus is the son. If he sets us free by his sacrifice for us, for our sins, for the remission of our sins on Calvary, then we are indeed free. For all eternity. I know that you are Abraham's descendants, but you seek to kill me because my word has no place in you. I speak what I have seen with my father, and you do what you have seen with your father. They said, they answered and said to him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said to them, If you are Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. But now you seek to kill me, a man who has told you the truth, which I heard from God. Abraham did not do this. You do the deeds of your father. And they said to him, We were not born of fornication. 
we have one Father, God. Jesus said to them, If God were your Father, you would love me, for I proceeded forth and came from God, nor have I come of myself, but he sent me. Why do you not understand my speech? Because you are not able to listen to my word. You are of your father, the devil, and the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources. For he is a liar and the father of lies. But because I tell you the truth, you do not believe me. Which of you convicts me of sin? And if I tell the truth, why do you not believe me? He who is of God hears God's words. Therefore, you do not hear because you are not of God. Bam! I love reading Jesus' words. He, he knew how to talk. I wish I was an eloquent speaker like he was. Then the Jews answered him and said to him, Do we not rightly say that you are a Samaritan and have a demon? Jesus answered, I do not have a demon, but I honor my father and you dishonor me. And I do not seek my own glory. There is one who seeks and judges. Most assuredly, I say to you, if anyone keeps my word, he shall never see death. Then the Jews said to him, Now we know that you have a demon. Abraham is dead, and the prophets. And you say, If anyone keeps my word, he shall never taste death. Are you greater than our father Abraham, who is dead, and the prophets are dead? Who do you make yourself out to be? Jesus answered, If I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my Father who honors me, of whom you say that he is your God. Yet you have not known him, but I know him. And if I say I do, do not know him, I shall be a liar like you. But I do know him, and he keeps his word. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. Then the Jews said to him, you are not 50 years old, and you have seen Abraham? Jesus said to them, Most assuredly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. Then they took up stones to throw at him. But Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them, and so passed by. All right, that was through chapter 8. We'll start with chapter 9 tomorrow. Y'all understand that? That was some good stuff I shared with you tonight. If you don't know Jesus, and if you don't know God, a lot of stuff in this book is not going to make any sense. And the Holy Spirit. Let me add the Holy Spirit to that too. Because I do. When I pick up this book. Every, every time I pick it up. I pray and ask the Holy Spirit. To tutor me and guide me. And translate for me. And give me any kind of help I need. You need all three parts of the Trinity. Friends. If you know one. You know them all. I could talk all night. But I better hush. Because. I'm going to run out of memory here pretty soon. I need to clean out my uh, camera. God bless you. I'll talk to you all tomorrow. Unless Jesus comes for me tonight. God bless you, friends. I love you. I love y'all's, uh, what you call it, comments, too. Thank you so much.